Hey guys, welcome to TechnoSpot.net. I'm Ashish and in this video we are going to do a Zen 4 for review. I got this device a week back and it is really amazing. And then I thought why not put in Moto E in comparison as well. So in this video we are going to do Zen 4 review as well as Moto E together to figure out whether you should go for Zen 4 which has a pretty awesome UI or whether you should go to Moto E because it stands out for some features which Zen 4 lacks. So before I start talking about it, now everything I talk in this video is from the perspective that it's 7000 rupees phone which means that there will be some quality that will not be really good and something which will be really really nice. That is what we need to figure out in the review. So let's begin. Screen and display. So if I have to recommend Zen 4 from screen and display perspective, there's both good and bad. Now it's not really bad but it's probably average and that is the display part. Zenfone 4 has a 4 inch screen display which is 800 by 480 TFT screen, capacitive touch screen. So the display is not going to be very very sharp. But on the other hand it's not really bad either. Because it's pretty smooth, icons are really nicely designed and doesn't look pixelated. That is what we are looking majorly uh, when we are picking up a 7000 phone. So from that perspective it's really good. Now if I have to compare it with Moto E which I have side by side. Moto E has a very sharp display because it has a QHD screen, high resolution which is 540 by 960 and 256 ppi which makes it a lot sharper. However, the screen response of Zen 4 which they have always advertised is really amazing. You should see how fast it swipes and it never lags. When I compared both of these phones side by side for swiping, it was really amazing to see how fast you can swipe on Zen 4. Build quality. How does Zen 4 for build quality stands out? Zen 4 is made out of all plastic. Inside, outside, everything is plastic except for the obvious processor and the other parts. But it's basically giving a plastic experience. While I didn't find it any problem holding it, using it, and you know, there's now no problem at all. It's very uh, decent uh, for the 7000 rupees, especially with the glaze and all and the buttons over here. But when I compared Moto E, I found Moto E much better. The reason is, it gives a premium feeling which was kind of missing in the plastic body of the Zenfone 4. However, this is going to be a little heavy and Zenfone 4 is pretty light. So from that perspective, make sure to pick up what you want. Also about the buttons, there is something which I noticed in Zenfone 4 and it's really really laggy. Zenfone 4 button doesn't respond as quickly as the Moto E buttons were responding. Uh, I'm not sure why and the same thing has happened with the Zenfone 5. So I am guessing this is a build glitch that they really need to fix when they come up with their next version of the phone. But as of now nothing can be done about it. So from button perspective Moto E really wins. Camera. We all love to take pictures. Low light, high light, any light. We just love to take pictures. Even if it doesn't come out great. So when I reviewed Moto E, it has a point and shoot camera which is a terrible camera. I mean, I would really not take a picture, even take out the camera out of this socket and it's, it's really that bad. But Zenfone 4 UI camera is impressive. It doesn't have a LED flash if you have noticed, but thanks to the Pixel Master technology of ASUS that the samples were really really good, both in daylight and not in very low light, but in low light, it was really okay. And it comes up with all those panorama and low light features and night light features to you know help you out in taking pictures very simple there's something we all look for so from the camera perspective this is not going to disappoint you and this is going to be a major selling point of Zenfone 4 battery life Moto E has a 1980 mAh battery while Zenfone 4 has a 1560 mAh battery surprisingly both the phones lasted for almost the same time on a on an average I would say because I tested it on Wi-Fi 3G playing game WhatsApp Facebook Twitter Candy Crush if you're wanted to know so everything was averaged out it came out to be 10 to 11 hours of battery on both the phones so really don't expect it to last for a whole day speakers now when people buy a phone they always look for music experience so both Zenfone 4 and Moto 8 delivers quality experience but when I compared Zenfone music capability it came out to be very very good there are two reasons for that one that Zenfone 4 has a, a pro equalizer I would say because it has different modes for sound profile audio wizard so it lets you easily switch modes for between music, movies and all. And ASUS has inbuilt a technology for the speakers, for the audio, which really helps out. 
Moto E was okay, but Zenfone 4 wins. Last not the least, uh, the whole review is not complete without talking about the Zen 4 UI, which I have actually reviewed in detail in a video, which you should go and watch. But I would say that Zenfone 4s will sell out more because of the UI features it carries along. You should really take a look at their apps, at the features they provide, and the connectivity between devices using the party link where you can just share the pictures among uh, everybody without anybody asking for it and there's PC link there's a uh, share it features and some amazing features in the UI itself which will make it look better now Moto E runs only a stock Android which means uh, you really don't get a lot of features here except for the Motorola mobility and there's alert feature here but Asus does pack up a lot of features in its Zen UI and that's what you get in Zen Phone 4 so that's it I will wrap up my review of Zen Phone 4 versus uh, Moto E. So if I have to give a conclusion here that which mobile I will pick up personally, I would say Zenfone 4. The reasons are very few but they are very powerful. The first reason is the Zen UI which is extremely powerful, very simple and there is something new to the Android users it provides. Second, the screen response is pretty amazing. I mean you can just swipe, 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 swipe and it really doesn't lag at all. The third point is the camera. This really has got an amazing camera with all the features which you always wanted in a low range phone. While Moto E camera is sucks. I mean there is something which I don't want it. Also Zenfone 4 has 8GB storage compared to Moto E which has only 4GB. Which gives you a lot of space for system updates and application updates which is not possible just alone on the SD card. So there is something to be counted for also. So that said if you are actually comparing between Moto E and Zenfone 4. Zenfone 4 is a clear winner because of these factors. So that said, pick up a Zenfone 4 clearly. It may lag a little but the overall experience is really not that bad. I mean that could be like a 10% of that. I could see it very closely that's why I can see it. But it's not simply like you know it's going to lag a lot. It's going to be laggy a little but that can be fixed. There are software lags which can be fixed and Asus has already rolled out two updates for that. So it's going to be fixed as soon as the KitKat version comes out. We hope so. so Pick up a Zenfone 4, don't pick up a Moto E.